This is Joel Antoinette here, and this is a dedication to Mr. Moran at the YTC Youth Automotive Training School. I'm here in Director Shipyard, Dania, Florida, and I'm over here to service this 160 foot Trinity that just happened to give me a call the day after I came visited you guys down there at YATC school. Now I'm making this little documentary so I could show you what I'm doing and how I'm applying the knowledge that I've learned through the YATC school to these mega yachts. So I'm going to take you down to the engine room. I'm going to show you the things that we've been fixing over the past week. Come on with me. Before we get to the engine room, we have to pass through the control room. Control room is where they operate all of the electrical panels and electricity for the vessel and of all the machinery inside the engine room. So now we're going to make our way into the engine room. Come on. All right, now we finally made it into the engine room. Now this boat is powered by a set of Caterpillar motors. These are 35 12 series motors made by Caterpillar, like I said. They are 2250 horsepower. And there's two of them, so there's almost 5,000 horsepower in this engine room. Now what happened with this vessel is they were sitting in an oyster bed somewhere up in the northeast and they sucked up all these little oysters into their sea strainers and from the sea strainers it got jam packed into the cooling system of the motor. Now they just barely made it back in with the engines overheating. They just got here just in the nick of time and they've hired me to come help clean out these motors to get them back online so they go down to the Caribbean and charter this next season. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about how the cooling system works and exactly what I did with these motors to get them back online. All right, to explain to you a little bit about how this cooling system works on these motors, first you have what is called a sea strainer, or some refer to it as a sea chest. This is a hole right down to the bottom of the boat. The water comes in and it goes through a basket to strain out any foreign material that shouldn't be coming in there. And it comes right up this pipe, right into this pump, and this pump takes the sea water and it pushes it through the engine. Now the engine has its own cooling system right here, it's separated and it has what's called a heat exchanger here. There's actually two other heat exchangers on this motor, three of them. Sometimes they have four different heat exchangers for the oil, fuel, air, all different types of heat exchangers. This heat exchanger here is for the engine water cooling. So the seawater pumps through here to cool the engine coolant and then the engine coolant is pumped throughout the engine by another pump over here. So the two exchange the heat, and the heat goes right out the back of the boat through the engine, through the uh, sea water. After the sea water leaves the raw water pump, it is delivered into what is called the after cooler. Now the after cooler is where the hot air off of the turbocharges, turbocharges enter the after cooler, and it's cooled by the sea water. Once that hot air is cooled by the sea water, it brings the oxygen molecules together to cram as many oxygen molecules as you can into the cylinders for better performance, better fuel efficiency, and just higher combustion ratio all the way around. After the seawater leaves the after cooler, it goes into this heat exchanger here. This heat exchanger here is for cooling the engine coolant. The seawater cools the engine coolant and is the engine coolant that is transferred throughout the main engine for its cooling capabilities. Now we're still not done with that seawater because after it cools the engine coolant, now it has to come back here and cool the gearbox down. Now this is a heat exchanger for the gearbox oil. Seawater comes in and the seawater leaves. And we're still not done with that seawater. Look, now it cools the exhaust. The exhaust is coming down here and going out to the bottom of the boat and to the back of the boat and it's water injected to help with the muffling and cooling efficiency. Now we're finally done with the seawater. That's a lot of steps for that seawater. What could go wrong? Alright, here we go. We're working on this after cooler here. We got all the bolts out. Now I got to remove this uh, turbo inlet right here and uh, then we're going to pop this girl out and carry her out and clean out all the oysters, mussels, whatever the heck they are that just create havoc on this engine. Alright, now we got the housing off. You can see where the air goes through the coil from the turbochargers and this is where the seawater travels through and the air goes through these fins right here to cool. You can see where the seawater enters is after cooler and where all the mussels and nastiness 
plugged it all up. So this is our main goal here is to clean this girl up. And now we got the after cooler removed. We got a nice shot of what the intake manifold looks like. You can see where the cooled air makes its way into the cylinders. Hey look, it's all clean. I love movie magic. Okay, you can see we got the after cooler all reinstalled, the turbo's all hooked up, and we're ready to fire this girl up. Let's see what happens. Pretty good. It's say it leaks. I think we can say this job's done. System is just the tip of the iceberg here in this engine room. As you have air conditioning, hydraulics, generators, and many other systems that are required seawater cooling. Now, I just want you to remember that I acquired these skills to be able to handle this kind of work through Jim Moran and his YATC School Youth Automotive Training Center. So, thank you for watching my little segment. I hope it was enjoyable for you.